In this AvTim's video, we're going to be building the F-16. This is built from Dollar Tree foam board and plans that are available on avtims.com. So let's heat up your glue gun, print out your plans from AvTim's, make sure to check the scale, it should be 1 to 4 inches, and let's get started. Feel free to develop your own technique. I like to cut out my paper shapes and lay them on top of the foam board. I'll put a little piece of tape to secure them down and hold them in place. The F-16 uses an AvTim's power pod. It's a module pod that can be put in any of our EDF plans. If you haven't built that, go back to our website, view the video, assemble your power pod, and come on back here. Take your time cutting out the shapes. Make sure you're using a nice sharp knife. You want to make sure your model looks nice and crisp. Work your way around complex parts, removing a little bit of foam at a time. It's easier to do small cuts than large cuts. Everybody has different ways of cutting these out. I like to work over the edge of a box. Red lines on the plans are 50% fold and break lines. Use your knife, cut halfway through, bend it to break it. If shown on the plans to remove the foam, go ahead and peel off that piece of foam leaving a paper flap. For some parts on the plans, you're going to remove paper from one side of the foam board. You'll remember we showed you how to do this using 50% alcohol and water mixture in the power pod video. Be sure not to remove the paper from the aileron. We leave both sides of the paper on for strength. To make the aileron hinges, you 50% cut, fold to break, then use your knife to slice a 45 degree angle on both sides of the foam. We use the same method on the leading edge of the wing. Fold it back, shave off 45% of both sides. Don't worry if you nick a little bit of the paper. You're going to flip it over, use a piece of scotch tape to reinforce the leading edge. If you haven't, remove the paper from the inside of the wing. Curve it on the edge of the table as you did in the power pod video. Work slowly bending the wing until you get a nice airfoil shape. Lay a bead of hot glue along the trailing edge of the bottom side of the wing. Fold the top side over and hold it firmly until it cools. Some people like to make a little line of hot glue in their hinge and use a scrap piece of foam to smear it all the way across. It strengthens the hinge makes it last a little longer. The canopy and nose cone are made from poster board. Cut out the shapes and glue them as shown. We're going to start working on assembling the fuselage. Several of these parts need their paper removed from their foam as well. Once the paper is removed, start with your bottom of the fuselage, curve it on the edge of a table. Work slowly, but you should up with a nice round curved bottom. Start on the air intake, lay a bead of hot glue in, curve it around, and hold it in place till cool. Dry fit the lower fuselage to the middle fuselage board. There's now little tabs that help make this easier. Use hot glue and fold the paper over to secure the bottom half of the fuselage to the center. Curve the top half of the fuselage the same way you did the bottom half. Start on the left side and work your way around gluing the little tabs onto the middle section of the fuselage. Take your time, this can be frustrating. A little bit of glue, fold it over. You can use the tip of the hot glue gun if you need to warm up a piece of paper to remove it if it didn't lay quite right. Before you know it, you'll be all the way around and you'll start to feel pretty good about your build by this time. It's starting to look like a jet. Lay the fuselage off to the side. Next is the canopy. We're going to use what we learned building the fuselage to make the canopy look amazing. By now you should be good at rolling parts. You want to work the canopy and make it nice and round before you get started with gluing. Start with the small bends first. Lay a little bead of glue in there, curve it around, hold it till it dries. Next do the bottom side. It's a long piece so you got to work a little quicker. 
Good luck. On a side note, we removed the little fringes on the front of the nose cone, so your part won't have those. If you haven't already, roll the poster board the same way you did the foam and glue the nose cone together. Make sure to dry fit it first, put a little hot glue in there, and stick it on the front. This is always an exciting moment. You're going to slide the whole canopy assembly onto the fuselage. It really starts to take shape now. If the canopy is a little too snug, you might need to trim the bottom so it fits better. Next, we're going to be working on the canopy mounting pin. Use a barbecue skewer to poke a hole between the canopy and the upper fuselage. Then trace the canopy onto the upper fuselage with a pencil. Now you can remove extra foam that's not needed. This will create lots of space for your battery and receiver and other electronics. Push the barbecue skewer down into the middle fuselage foam board. Cut it off and hot glue the peg. Use poster board to reinforce the hole in the canopy top, look at that, you have a nice mounting peg now. Okay, now take your windshield that you made out of poster board, line it up on top, take your time, put a little bit of hot glue on the inside of it, and stick it down onto the canopy. To make the wing spar nice and strong, I took a paint stick and I cut it in half. We're only going to use one half of that paint stick. Slide that in the fuselage as shown. Dry fit the wings and see how they look. You may need to use a barbecue skewer, kind of like a shoehorn. Start in the back of the wings, lift up the top half of the fuselage, and wiggle the wing until it slides under there nicely. Don't glue the wings yet, dry fit only. Let's get the vertical stabilizer on there. Pinch the ends of the bottom of the stabilizer so that it'll slide in a little easier. You're going to use this coat hanger later, but for now what we're going to do is heat it up in a candle, just the edge. We're going to use this as a hot knife to create a tunnel in the vertical stabilizer. Remove the wire and replace it with a barbecue skewer. Use the pointed end and poke a hole into the center of the fuselage. Take the barbecue skewer out, flip it over, and cut it to fit. Take a scrap piece of barbecue skewer, make a nice big ball of hot glue, stick it in there, and secure the bottom of the barbecue skewer to the middle section of the foam. Next, lay a bead of hot glue along the bottom edge of the vertical stabilizer. Now we're going to work on the elevator. You're going to need that coat hanger. Make sure it's nice and straight. Dry fit it into your fuselage and bend the ends down. Remove the wire and mount the elevator paddles on and then dry fit it again. This hinge is a little complex. You're going to need to cut two little pieces of foam and glue them here as shown. This little piece of foam has two purposes. It acts as a backstop for the wire it also acts as a spacer to keep the elevators evenly spaced. Some people use a little barbecue skewer instead of a piece of foam. You want to add a little tiny piece of barbecue skewer in front of the coat hanger. This makes your hinge a lot smoother. Next we're going to mount the EDF power pod. Slide the barbecue skewers to one side and push it into the back of the fuselage as shown. Make holes in the top half of the fuselage for the engine mount. Then do the same for the other side. Use poster board to reinforce the holes. Next we're going to trim the barbecue skewers to fit the F-16. Pull the barbecue skewers to one side and slide them between the fuselage halves. Then push through the holes on the other side. Pull the barbecue skewers all the way through, 
and align with the holes on the right side. Wiggle them through the holes. Trim the barbecue skewers on the left side. One last thing you have to install is the thrust rod. This stops the EDF fan from moving forward in the fuselage. Just poke the barbecue skewer through, trim it off, and you're all set. It amazes me that these don't get knocked off when the airplane lands, but they don't. Just put a little bit of glue on and smack them on there. Okay, here's going to install the electronics. There's lots of different ways to do this, and feel free to modify and be creative to do what you want. I like the battery all the way up front for weight and balance. I created a servo tray by just making a simple U-shape out of foam. I made it double thick. I use hot glue to secure my servos in place. I'm sure there's lots of different variations. I just like it quick and dirty. I love to use these little wire stoppers. Sometimes I use Z-Bends as well. You'll need to make a notch on the top of the fuselage for your music wire to poke through on its way up to the rudder. I also like to use these control horns. They're cheap and I buy them in a pack of 10. Once you have your rudder lined up, tighten up your stopper. Trim your excess wire and don't forget the screw on the top of the servo. You're gonna work the elevator in a similar manner that you did the rudder. You wanna make sure to keep the wire very close to the bottom side of the fuselage. Use a little piece of poster board, fold it in half, hot glue it around the piano wire. Then glue it to the fuselage. Put another piece of poster board over top of it to secure it nicely. Dry fit your wing and make sure that it fits around the piano wire nicely. I like to mount the control horn directly over the coat hanger nice and secure. Finish up the servo the same way you did as the rudder and we're on to the wings. One aileron server should go in each wing root. Trace the servo that you wish to use and cut out a nice little hole for it. I find it a little easier to trim off the mounting posts on the servo. They slide in a lot nicer. You can put a little dab of hot glue on the bottom of the wing and in they go. Make sure to wait to hot glue them till you, everything is fit and hooked up properly. I actually ran out of control horns, so I trimmed some servo heads and made my own little control horns. I use a little piece of wire to push the servo lead up inside the fuselage before I glue the servo in. Nice little bed of glue, and in she goes. Now you're ready to glue on your wing. Make sure it's in perfect position. You may need that barbecue skewer again. A little bead of hot glue on the top and the bottom, and you're all set. I'm usually pretty bad about mounting my receiver. This time I used a little bit of Velcro. I think it worked really well. I also used Velcro to hold the battery in place. Center of gravity is very important. The CG is at the very forward edge of the wing. Anywhere between one inch from the, from the very tip of the front of the wing back, you should be just fine. Should give you a little nose down, it's better than, than tail heavy. We really don't want this model to be tail heavy. Thanks for watching. Look for our coloring the F-16 video.